You are listening to the Babe You've Got This podcast where you receive mindset and business coaching designed for the everyday gal who has big goals and dreams and is craving that guidance, insight and reaffirmation for creating success in their life. This is episode number 12 and it's also our final episode for 2019. We will be back in January for season two. So today I am talking with the gorgeous Steph Bell who is a Melbourne-based chick that is all about women's empowerment. She is passionate about holistic living and personal growth. Steph juggles two online businesses that are each focused on helping to educate, empower, and inspire others to take charge of their health, their lives, and their businesses. Steph is a wellness ambassador and a social media marketing educator. A teacher by trade, Steph spent many years in the classroom teaching high school students to embrace their creativity in the performing arts. But as a stressed and unfulfilled teacher, life started to lead her down a different path and she embraced the opportunity to pursue her passions for business, travel, and helping others to live lives full of more purpose and inspiration. So in this episode, Steph is sharing with us how her baby have got this moment took her from unfulfilled to thriving with inspiration. And we know this is a relatable topic for so many women who just feel stuck in their career, but just don't have that confidence or direction to make a change. Uh, just a reminder to hit subscribe so you are always in the loop when a new episode drops. I am so grateful that I can give you this time and content to you today. And remember to leave a heart-filled review and five sparkly stars if you are listening through iTunes. Or leave your love-filled comments in the comments section below. By this process, you are contributing to our bigger vision and impact of inspiring and helping women just like you to grow their success and their mindset. Don't forget to leave your Instagram handle as well so we can give you a shout out and recognize your greatness too. All right, let's get started. Hello. Hey, Steph. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. I am just, oh, I'm just, my cup is so full um, being on this podcast. It's, yeah. I know. I feel Thanks like for having me on. You're so welcome. I feel like there's lots of love in this so um, love. already. <laughs> We're like, we just can't stop smiling. We probably know, sound so silly. Plus, it's almost Christmas, so it just, I don't know, everything's magical at this time of the year. So magical. Well, today, this time next week is Christmas. Oh, my I know. gosh. I it's know. It's gone so quick. If you think about the start of this year, like, it just has flown by. It, it has. I feel like that happens every Christmas. We're like, where did the year go? <laughs> Very I know. I say, I swear, Very as we get older, like, every Christmas is like, every fortnight do you know do you want to know something funny like, like we've already opened up with a tangent on what we're talking about today but do you know what i feel i feel like telethon is every fucking month every month is telethon like it was just telethon i'm like it was just telethon like last year oh it's back again it might be because i don't really watch tv and then like so one time maybe that's the out. only time you watch <laughs> I'm like, how is it telethon again? Where is this year gone? Anyway, that's a little fun fact about me. <laughs> right, today's going to be a fun episode and I love it. Like we're bringing all the Christmas spirit and the Christmas love to you guys. So if you listen to put this on in the morning or whenever it is in your day and you may have had a crappy start to your morning, hopefully you're feeling our lovey vibes and they're radiating through your speaker or your earphones and you're smiling or you're just laughing at us because we're already big dorks already. <laughs> Sending lots of positive vibes. Yeah. Oozing it out. Doing, like, we're doing a little happy dance <laughs> in our chairs. So many right. sparkles. That's it. Okay. So finishing this year strong, I'm, I'm really excited and grateful to have you on Steph because like we need something, we need something really inspiring, really empowering to finish this year, get us set for a brand new decade. And I know what you're going to talk about is going to like, impact so many listeners so i want you to take us, take us back steph like paint a bit of a okay. paint a picture for us um when i know you've had so much growth happening especially in the last decade like this is a time oh, for reflection absolutely um, and i know like i guys i did ask steph and she was like oh my gosh what how many like, i have so many stories that i can share so we're just <laughs> choosing one for today maybe in the future and a new season um we might be able to share some more but take us back to that time, paint a picture for us. What was life like? What were the struggles? Um, take us on that journey. Okay, cool. So look, probably, look, I'll take you back three years ago. Three years ago, my life looked 
very different to what it looks like now. Um, I feel like I was a completely different person to the person I feel like I am now. I was a very stressed, very unfulfilled high school teacher um, who kept trying to convince myself that I was happy. <laughs> Has anyone else done that before? You know, you just, you like, you get really stressed on a Sunday night because you know that you're gonna have to get through a full another week of your unfulfilled job. And you're just like, Oh, I don't want to, I don't want to do this again. But you know, you keep trying to convince yourself, no, nope, like this is the path I chose. I decided to go to uni. I decided to be a teacher, like suck it up. Everyone hates their job. This is normal. <laughs> and I just, for a long time, kept trying to convince myself that I was happy. But truth be told, I was so lost. I had no purpose, like, no mission, no inspiration. I would get through the day and collapse on the couch, just feeling like, oh, I survived another day. And then, you know, Friday would hit and I'd get so excited for the weekend and yes, no work. But then I'd spend the weekend doing work anyway, because, you know, if you've ever met a teacher before, that's just what they do. They work all the time. And then Sunday night would come and I'd get that you know, overwhelming depression that would just hit me that I would have to go through, you know, another week of work. And I think, you know, I had this, I had this moment where I remember reflecting like now and thinking, oh my God, like, how did I let myself get to that point? But, you know, I remember driving to work one day and I was, I was literally driving and I caught myself in this thought, like this conscious thought thinking, I wonder like how much I would have to just like crash my car just a little bit, just to get like a week off work, you know? And uh, that terrified me more than anything. Cause obviously like I, I, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to hurt myself. I was just needing a break. I was needing a breather from the stress, the stressful job that I had and um, just feeling so lost and uninspired. And, you know, I had, I had a business. Um, it was just a, like a side hustle online business that was like a, as a wellness ambassador. And honestly, for me back then, it was literally just about helping people. It was just about, I loved this program and I wanted to share the program with the world. And I never thought that I could actually make a business out of this because in my mind I was like just a teacher, you know, and I was, I had zero self-belief. I had zero self-belief that I would ever know how to run a business or how to even begin doing that. So I just kind of didn't even think about it. And, you know, one night I was marking, um, oh gosh, I got the vision so clearly in my head, but I think it was year 10 English papers and I had a massive stack in front of me and, you know, like a pink pen in my hand. And I was just like circling all the bad spelling mistakes. And it just, you know, this had, this had probably been like my fourth, my fourth uh, night in a row of doing these. And I like, it just, it hit me like a ton of bricks, like literally slapped me in the face that what am I doing? doing like I uh, my life is way too short to be feeling this way and way too short to be wasting it doing something I don't even like and like it just it hit me so hard and from that point you know I really started looking at okay I need to make some changes in my life and I need to create my happy and I need to create a life that I actually love and, you know, it didn't happen at once. Like you don't go from no self-belief to like rocking your goals straight away. It takes a lot of self-work and it takes, you know, lots of mini steps and failures and then more mini steps and then back steps, you know, it takes, it takes a long time to get there. But you know what? I look back three years ago now and I'm like, well, what if I didn't actually start this journey? What if I, what if I was still in the exact same position and I'd never made a decision to, you know, change anything in my life, I would still be three years later in the exact same position, unfulfilled, uninspired, just going through the motions of my life, waiting for the day when, you know, I had a baby and I could escape that, <laughs> you know, like that, that's so sad to me that so many people are stuck in this, you know, circle and, um, don't don't know a way out don't don't know how they can step out and start working towards something that they actually love yeah oh and i love you the how you say that because i know there might be some people listening and might be like how dare you say that that oh we get stuck in a cycle and we wait to have a baby to have a break but that the reality is like if you if you get triggered at that maybe that's what you're waiting to do and steph and i have we both learned that that's why we have this podcast it's your baby you've got this moment like it's reaffirming you have everything inside of you to make the life of your dreams or make the life that you want to live. And it is those reality checks that we get. We're just like, whoa, 
do we actually want to be waiting for that or do we actually want to be what, um, blaming or, or, or justifying something externally of why I can't live the way I'm living now and hoping Absolutely. that someone will come and save us. Just so true. And think, yeah. And I think that's what I was waiting for. I was waiting for, you know, like I used to fantasize about, okay, you know, in a few years I'll have a baby and that's okay. Like I'll be able to get out of this stressful job and it's just for a few more years and I can power through like, this is, this is the career I chose. And, but the fact of the matter is like, no one was coming to save me. If I had just had a baby in that situation, I would have been back six months later, 12 mm -hmm. months later in the exact same position, but now with a baby and trying to juggle it all. Yeah. So, you know, I think I talk to so many women who are, are feeling the same way and they're just, they're uninspired and they're, you know, not living the life that they consciously want to live. And they're just waiting for something to kind of happen so that they can get yeah. out instead of actually taking small steps every day to create the life that they love. Yeah, exactly. So we just have to throw out Mr. Walt Disney's, um, <laughs> what he created for us. I'm like, you know, I was a massive Cinderella Where's fan. Where's that glass slipper? <laughs> I know. And it's like, as much as it is about, it, it, there's a, there's, you know, duality in everything, right? As much yeah. as the Disney movies, there's a lot of female empowerment because it's female Absolutely. lead characters, but there is still that sense of Prince Charming or something is going to come and save externally. And guy, like I had to learn this the hard way. Look, I feel like we all learn it the hard way. I realize and we all do. We all learn the hard way. There's no easy way to hear it. Like you have to save yourself. You have to. It has to come yeah. from within, and there's no ifs or buts because if it comes from the outside, if you chase it on the outside, you're going to continually chase it, and nothing's ever going to be good enough. And I still struggle with this today. Like I'm not perfect. I know Steph, you're not perfect. Like no we own yeah. this bit. We own like we own yeah. our fact that I would love for it. To, you know, I'd love for my husband to be a millionaire. And I can just sit on the beach and do it. You know, I can leave it all up to him. But then how... Do you know what? I saw this quote the other day. It was just like a Facebook meme. And it said, um, be the CEO that your parents wanted you to marry. And I was like, yes. Oh, I love like, that. That is what I want. I don't, I don't want to wait for my husband to become a CEO and a millionaire. I want to be that CEO. Yeah. And I want to be that millionaire. Yeah. And I think, you know, you're talking about the Disney movies i don't know if you've noticed over the last over the last decade the shift that we as women have had and like we are part of an incredible movement at the moment and the women's empowerment movement is so damn strong and i'm so excited to be part of it and if you look at the progression of disney movies you know from snow white who needed the prince charming to kiss her so that she could literally live again to yeah. now movies like frozen or moana where like they're a boss ass chick who are like going and they're saving the world, you know, like it's such a different spin on things now. Yeah. And I think the women being brought up in this generation, Oh, they're, they're going to be unstoppable. They yeah. are just going to have There's very different beliefs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And here we are. We're kind of that generation. So guys, we're in our late twenties. I think you're early. For me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're in that generation where we kind of like, I never really got into Frozen because, you know, I, I love Oh, my God. Know. Frozen's amazing. Oh, Moana is kinda, great. Yeah. Look, my, my, I loved Madagascar and Shrek and I oh know that's not yeah. Disney, but and then, <laughs> and Finding Nemo and then I kind of transitioned out of watching, like, yeah, <laughs> cartoons, but I love Moana. Anyway. You know what? I never transitioned out of that. I still love Disney. <laughs> I love Disney. I just don't watch it. Actually, I should watch it more. I definitely, anyway, tangent. Tangent over. <laughs> Back on track. Yeah, we, we still are. And, and I know the listeners, you guys are very similar age to us. And that's why like we attract our tribe, right? So anyone who's like 22 years old plus, I find, or 21 plus, like we still grew up with the someone's going to come save us. The kids these days Absolutely. are starting to realise that with the age of awareness, every like it comes from within. But yeah, we, we kind of... But you finished, know what? Yeah. We are the ones who are paving the way for the yeah. younger generation like we we are the ones who are recreating the stigma and showing the younger generation that no of course you don't have to wait for a man to come and you know earn the money for you like go and create it yourself like that's so empowering to know that we are the ones creating that yeah, change it is and actually i feel like we're totally gone a little bit off the story but i love this because this is meant to come <laughs> up right now because, you know as i said i like how much i would love my husband to do this and that but what's been so interesting is I have a husband who actually, I love him to bits and he's not someone who wants to be a CEO. He actually is so chilled. He goes like, he balances me out so well and he's the exact man that I'm supposed to be with because I, as much as I get to the point where, you know, I have 
at least once a week. Fuck, this is hard. Is it worth it? Building my business, pushing myself past my limits. Is it fucking worth it? And I, I do, I have, sometimes I have mini meltdowns. Sometimes I just, like, this is too hard. Where's the wine? Like I'll go buy a bottle yep. of wine. Like, <laughs> like instant gratification right there. But I wouldn't have it any other way because I've done working for someone else. And I just, I just can't, I can't handle someone else telling me how much I'm worth and I'm growing totally their goals. Like, get that. I totally respect and um, love bosses and managers and whatnot in their field. But if they're bossing me or managing me, uh, uh, yeah. uh, it's not going to work. Like, I think this, is, yeah. this is exactly what we're talking about, right? Like when I say that teaching was bad, it was bad for me. Mm. I have so many beautiful friends who love the profession and they are so fulfilled and they're so happy and yes they get stressed sometimes but they they wouldn't change anything we all get stressed it's yeah. you know you can't you can't create a box and expect everyone to fit in the box mm. for me I just I just didn't fit in that box and for you you just didn't fit in the corporate box you know it mm. do, doesn't make it right or wrong there's people out there who love it it just means that find what works for you and be okay with what works for you and be okay standing up and saying, you know what? I'm not happy anymore. I want to create something else. Well, that's it. I was just thinking, like, how can we make this into a little quote? And it's, it, that's it. we're not saying like you, you might be the teacher who loved the job, but that's the box that yeah. you've created for yourself. It, create your own box, ladies. <laughs> create your own box. <laughs> All right, shall we get back on topic? Um, yes, sorry. <laughs> don't apologize. I love these. I love this conversation. So... <laughs> Um, cause my memory is not the most greatest in the world. Mm. So we knew that you were sick of your work. It was stressing you out. You were marking the papers. You were so done. You're like wanting to crush your cart. Went, I've been there so many times. I'm like, what yes, can I do right so now? To, like, be a bit of a victim. So I don't have to deal with my life problem. Yep. We all do it. Yep. Um, guilty as charged. Um, so I'm not and owning it, owning it, yeah, owning it. <laughs> and if anyone out there cannot own the fact that they have played victim in their life, then you need to. You need to. <laughs> You're being victim to this circumstance of us. <laughs> anyway, um, no, we love you. We love you so much. So what was it that, t- take us through when you actually quit, when you threw in the towel. Um, yep. So tell us a bit of the story. So I'll kind of combine the rest of the questions. Is, so, yeah, you sure. had, so when your baby got this moment kicked in, what mm-hmm. the changes were that you made and paint the picture of like what it's been able to create for you, like just making, taking that scary step of, into the unknown. Sure. Okay. Well, so for me, honestly, the hardest step for me, like self-belief was a massive issue, but it was all about what people would think of me. And it was all about the judgment that I would get when I stood up and said, you know what, I want more than this because, you know, you get, you get so used to defining yourself as your career. You know, you'd meet people and they'd be like, what do you do? And you say, I'm a teacher. You know, like you just get so used to defining yourself by that. And for me, that was the scariest thing was changing that. Um, and standing up and saying, you know, I want more in my life because for me, I had been brought up to know that wanting more sometimes was a really negative thing. You know, like you don't want to be that person. You don't, you know, people will judge you if you're that person. And, um, so it took me, it took me a long time to kind of come to terms with that. And then, so what I did, like I, like I said before, you know, you don't just go from no self-belief to like rocking it overnight. It takes lots of steps and successes and failures and challenges and all of the things in between. And so I think for me, I didn't throw in the towel straight away. I started, um, started working towards my goals, um, every single day, just a little bit every single day. So like I would do like 15 minutes here, 15 minutes there, you know, an hour personal development every day. Like I would drive to work and my car, I used to call it a carversity because it was like a university, but in my car. University um, on wheels, wheels, I think. We, yeah, I, university yeah, on yeah. wheels. Like, yeah. So like half an hour to work and half an hour home, that was an hour every single day that I could listen to personal development. And just by kind of, you know, they say, um, Oh my gosh, I've forgotten the quote. You might know it, Kim. Where energy goes, magic flows. Or where something like that. where focus, where your focus goes, energy flows. Energy flows. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. basically, like it was just, it was just a little bit every single day. But because I was focusing on something that was my goal, instead of just feeling lost and having no purpose and no mission, magic started really happening. And before I knew it, like I, I had a business. I was a businesswoman. I was like able to kind of go, oh my gosh, like, okay, I have choices now. What do I, what do I actually want to do? Like it's, I knew it wasn't teaching. I, like I said, I had reached that point. Um, but then I actually had choices. So 
you know, for me, I wasn't the person who just, you know, decided and then quit my job and like tried to find something else. I kind of juggled both at the same time until my business was big enough for me to step away from teaching a little bit. Um, so I just, I did it small. Like I started in 15 minutes, you know, here and there every single day and slowly reduced down my teaching load from full time to part time to relief teaching. And um, now, you know, three years on, I solely work from home. So I have my amazing wellness business and I've just launched a social media management um, business and education. So what I found was, you know, the last few years doing what I do online is uh, it's all about teaching people how to create an income online, right? And the skills that I've learned and the skills that I teach, you know, the, the teacher in me just couldn't help but share that knowledge with other people. And, you know, I see cafe owners or Pilates instructors or real estate agents. And, you know, they have no idea about social media. And I just think oh, I do, I know how to do that. And I could teach you how to do that. And I could empower you to really create success in your business by teaching you how to do that. So I just kind of felt like there was a bit of a, a need for it. And the teacher in me just had to help. So now I, now I run an education program um, for business owners on how to, you know, use social media. That social media is so powerful, and um, yeah. So now I still, I still have my passion for teaching and helping people get their like aha moments. I call it, you know, when they realize oh, I can do this, and like it's not that hard, and of course I can do this. Like I loved helping my students get to that point, and now I do that. I just do it with adults, <laughs> and yeah. it's on my terms, and it's you know, now instead of driving to work, feeling unfulfilled and like having to deal with marking and planning and all the things that I really struggled with. Now I wake up every day and I'm so filled with inspiration and I have to force myself to go to bed at night because I'm just so fired up and want to keep working all the time. And that for me, that is just such a huge transformation because I was always like, oh, work. And now I'm like, yes, I just want to keep working. Like, why stop for Christmas? Let's just keep going. <laughs> oh, I feel yeah. Like, I'm so excited for Christmas. But I just, we were saying, like, we just think the one day and then back to yes. it. Yes. Let's and get you back can to hear work. It. It's so fun. You can hear it in your voice. And like, I, I just love this because there'll be listeners who are like, you know what, ladies, I'm with you. I've had that moment. I have said goodbye. I've embraced the fear. And I've been able to create something. And even if you feel like you're not at the goal you want to be, that's fine because goals never end. Like we hit a goal, a new one gets created. If that's fine. Yeah. But you might be that's listening. And yeah, you might be listening and be like, oh God, but like you must be so confident and you must be able to do oh, this. No way. That's, oh, and that's just, that's like, I'm going to call bullshit on that because that's oh, you, <laughs> that's you being a victim to your circumstance and Absolutely. putting putting someone else on a pedestal and yourself in the pit where we're all equal. We all have it in us. We're no different. It's just who's willing, you know, that good old saying that means Steph love is to pull the trigger yeah. Yeah. to make action happen. And, and guys, we want, like, if you're in that space where you want to take action and you don't know where to go, like do it. Like Steph did the personal development. Like what can you listen to? Who can you reach out to? Who can you get coaching from? Um, if you're looking for a business system already are done up because you don't want to have to create something yourself. Find someone who coaches business that way. I do. Steph does. Like there are people all around you ready to help find you. Find something you're passionate mm. about because if you, if you find something that you really love to do, you will never feel like it's work. Yeah. You will always feel like you're at least living your values and you're loving it. And I feel this is my way to look at it because, and again, with that saying is you never work a day in your life. It's the difference between your working, it's choosing your heart because we can mm -hmm. paint the vision and the picture of working, um, doing something you love, you don't have to work and we think it's all rainbows. It's not rainbows. You've got to work fucking hard for your goals. Absolutely. But it's knowing that it's not that feeling. I've had that feeling where I'm just so tired and drained from doing something I don't love and I feel stressed and I feel tired. And then there's times in my business where I feel tired, but it's because I've just done a 16 hour day putting in so much energy into something that's going to create longevity in my business. Yeah. It's going to um, add value to people. And then that to me, like that's the hard, that's the tired that I would rather choose. And yeah. I guess it comes down to that. Yeah. Choose your heart. Like you can stay where you are right now and that's totally fine. But if, if you're complaining or if it doesn't feel right, the only person that can make a difference is you. And that is so mm -hmm. true. And you know, 
what terrified me the most three years ago was looking ahead five years and being in the exact same position. And then another yeah. five years being in the exact same position and, you know, being 65, 70, wanting to retire and looking at my life going, why did I just suffer through my whole life? You know, yeah. and all, I just think, you know, like baby steps towards your goals, that's where it has to start. You, you might not be the person like I wasn't, I didn't have enough self-belief to just quit my job and go after my dreams. I, I could have never have done that, but I could show up for myself every single day in a small way and just take those baby steps until I gained confidence. And you know what, like, like you were saying, I'm, I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. There are still moments where I'm like, God, like, can I actually do this? Yeah. Like, is anyone actually going to be inspired by this? You know, when I'm, I'm going to be really raw and honest with you. When you asked me to do this podcast, the first thing that went through my head was why, why me, <laughs> you know? And, but that like, that's just an old belief system that it doesn't, what I'm saying is you don't just wake up one day and not have that belief system. It's, it's an actual conscious thought to be like, no, that's my old belief system. This is my new belief system. And I'm going to listen to that belief system instead of my old one. Cause that got yeah. me nowhere. Exactly. Oh, I love it. I just love, I love this information. Like this just fills my cup so much. And I love me whoever too. invented <laughs> podcasts. Like thank you, Mr. <laughs> podcast, Mrs. Podcast. I'm going to be sexist there. Um, thank <laughs> thanks, you for, Mrs. Podcast. <laughs> thanks, Mrs. Podcast. Thank you for this platform. Um, I love it. But I think the next question was going to be advice going forward, but I know in everything you just said, we kind of did give you guys the tips. Like Steph's advice is the shit that she did go like, that's going to work for you. Go do it. We all kind of do the same thing. It's just, we got to find our niche. What do we want to be having a, a university on wheels in our car? Do we need to pay for a coach? Do we need to sit down and, and schedule our week so we can actually fit in things that are going to brain, give us time to brainstorm and take action on it, what we're passionate about. So is there any last little tips that you would love to finish up with? Yeah. Honestly, it's, it's just that it's just stop pretending that everything is fine and trying to convince yourself that you're happy, like feel the real feelings and it's okay to admit that you want more. And it's definitely okay to start working towards more because you know what, when you actually start talking about it, the amount of people who are in your exact same situation and who feel the exact same way is unbelievable. You think you're alone and you think like, oh, I can't, I can't be that person to like want more and to stand out. And, but the fact of the matter is there are so many other people in that boat and, you know, like you might be like me and struggle with self-belief and that sort of things. But the reality is small steps, like baby, just take baby little steps towards your goal because they add up to huge results and if you never take that step then you stay stuck and if you project five years forward do you still want to be in the same position and if that's a no then you know start doing the things that really make you happy and work towards a life that you actually love because guys like life is bloody short and <laughs> you need to live it right now because right now is the best it's ever going to be and tomorrow is the best it's ever going to be and the day after that is the best it's ever going to be yeah. and you need to start looking at your life like that instead of just suffering through it until one day you're saved yeah which just take the first when step is the, when is that day like exactly what are you when are you saved when you oh i don't even want to say it because it's bloody scary like it's pretty much the day you die right yeah then you can finally forget but that's no, not you what save we yourself. Want. You save you yourself. save yourself. Yeah, I love it. I love it so much. Thank you so much, Steph. Um, I don't even know how long we talked for. I think we got a good half an hour. I feel like <laughs> oh, I love this episode. This is such an amazing episode to finish up the year and finish up the decade. Twenty twenty. Yeah, yeah. So thank you so much, Steph. Um, this is so amazing. And guys, remember. Um, leave your review because the more and download these share this take a screenshot share it on your instagram story tag myself tag steph we will retag you um and share your social media as well and all this is doing like it's not about us it's not about you it's about who else can we help who else yeah. needs to hear this and we all know we probably could list five people in our life right now that yeah. you <laughs> not even the, the strangers we don't know right so please share this guys. Um, we just, we just want, we just want to grow our impact of helping, especially women and can be men too, but look, let's be real. It's called baby paving the way. <laughs> yeah. 
Awesome, guys. All right. And what else was I going to say? I think that is every Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Have a happy new year. Um, I hope the next couple of weeks is everything you've ever wanted um, for this silly season. And it's full of connection and love and family and friendship and yummy food and drinks and presents and whatever. Lots of wine. <laughs> lots, of wine. <laughs> yes. lots and lots of bubbles and wine. All right. Um, yeah. Awesome. All right, guys. Have a Bye, everyone. Yeah. See ya. Peace out.